So let's welcome to the stage the CEO and President of Power Source Coaching, Dr. Sean Powers. Thank you. Um, what a fabulous day for chiropractic, right? It's absolutely the greatest day because this is the only day we have right here, right now. Tomorrow is promised to no one. And I know that in a way that I wish I did not know. Because two weeks ago, my niece lost her life. And she was only 30 years old. And what we're trying to concentrate on in our family is not the sadness of her death, but the joy of a life well lived. When I had the opportunity to go and to speak in Scotland, she happened to be studying in Oxford. So I got to spend a day in Oxford with her. And so I'm going to bring um, a focus to you today about the time is now. Right here, right now. You, nobody knows what tomorrow holds. So that you would maybe leave this room today and operate out of the frame that this conversation that I have with this individual in the elevator, at the restaurant, in the taxi cab, on the airplane, might be literally the conversation that will change their life, that will save their life, that will give them something, a paradigm that they never knew existed. The adjustment that you give today might be the last adjustment you ever have in you. It might be the conversation over the front desk when you go back as a CA that that might be the last conversation that person ever has or that you ever have. So I don't want to be a downer. I want to be an inspirer. I want to breathe life into you to do more with the life that is yours. Now, I believe I've been in practice 33 years this July. 33 years. I wake up more excited about it. During this past two weeks, you know, when she died on Wednesday morning because of Memorial Day and things like that, we couldn't wake her or bury her to the following Tuesday or Wednesday. And so our tribe, our family, our friends, our supporters were all around. And we were eating and we were communing and we were loving. And whenever that happens in my life, and when our family is like this, whenever there's a celebration, wherever there's a tragedy, there's always, what else? An adjusting table, right? So everybody's lining up, getting adjusted. You know, people are thinking, how are we going to get through this disconnected? We're reconnecting people when we're giving them the power of the adjustment. So your tribe is the tribe of your office. Your tribe is the people that you serve. Some of us, you know, like we heard Jenna the other day, her tribe is the fertility tribe. My tribe is the human tribe. I, you know, I love kids. I have 65% pediatric practice. I love um, old people. I love young people. I love people that are not yet born, you know. And so we just want to talk today about inspiring life into people. I often talk about the purpose of chiropractic is to save lives, to change lives, and to increase the odds of having a higher quality and a higher quantity of life. And I know sometimes chiropractors think, you know, am I really saving a life? And I'm going to tell you in 33 years, I have seen lives change. I have seen lives saved through the power of the adjustment. So if you could just embrace that you have within your hands, your heart, your anchored mind, the power to literally impact a person, a human being, beyond your wildest dreams. And if that's just a little bit too much for you, if you belong to the tribe of the symptom treater and the backcracker and the numbness and the tingling reliever, that's okay too. Because when you make that adjustment, all of our research shows that it literally is increasing the quality of their function of their organs and every tissue and every cell in your body. So you don't even have to know it, understand it, or believe it. It's happening to the people while they're on your table. Ever since I was a little girl, I just wanted to help people. And I wanted to help people because my father was one of those statistics of 40% of the population who have heart disease have no symptoms until they die. 
And so I thought, what can I do? I could go away, I could be a nurse, I could you know, work in intensive care, I could save people from dying. So I grew up right here in this beautiful windy city of Chicago, and I had my realization that the place that you don't really get your life saved is in an intensive care unit here in Chicago. I was working as a nurse. I saw 12 people die in 16 hours. Boom, 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 just like that. Even though we were the highest, most functioning, technological, top and bottom nurses, the best doctors right there in that center of the hospital, people still die. And so it made me want to do something different. And I'd been exposed to chiropractic when I was in nursing school at Mary Cross College in Davenport, Iowa. And there are no accidents, right? We, get, we have conversations, we meet people, we have experiences that define our lives for many years to come. I've not missed a week of having my spine checked in a lot of years. People tell me that I should stop telling people how old I am, <laughs> but I don't care. I'm gonna be 60 in September. I have not missed a week of getting my spine checked in 43 years, and I won't do it because I won't miss it because I want to continue to love, to serve, to give, to breathe life into people through the power of the words, the power of the adjustment, just a loving touch. I cannot tell you how kind and generous people are, especially when they're free of interference, right? You know, people's lives are just different. So I'm gonna ask you today to make a commitment, to be a lifesaver, to be an influencer, to be an empowerer, to realize that you have the ability to influence people, to affect a course of events of a person's life. You've heard from every speaker, the number one person you have to influence first is who? yourself, right? And, and I, I think that if the, you are my tribe because you're right here at Parker. You're here learning, growing, saying, I want more. I want to raise my, you know, I want to go first class. I want to be the best that I personally can be. And that's the tribe of people who can influence because you're investing in yourself. You're taking the time to say, I don't know it all. You know, I've been doing this for 33 years. I would never think that I know it all. I'm in every class, listening, hearing, taking notes, buying books. So I also want you to realize that you have the power to persuade people. Persuasion is the art of helping someone into a position they do not currently hold to a position or understanding that gives them a better outcome. We know we live in a world that believes in the outside in. They look at everything from the outside in. They make all their decisions from the outside in. If you could persuade people and if you could become a paradigm pioneer to help people to look at everything from above, down, inside, out, that's how you change lives. That's how you make a difference. So when you leave here today, you've heard all sorts of things. And have you noticed you've heard the same thing over and over and over again? Like everything that Jean said, I'm already going to say maybe in a different way. Everything that Danny said, we're gonna, we've said that. Other people have said that because the themes are universal. The commitment that you need to make, number one, is to yourself. That you will not waste your life, that you will not wait for the next minute, the next hour, to live in your greatness, to create the life that you desire, not necessarily the life you have been handed. Because you have the power to do that when you make a commitment, the universe, God, whatever you believe in, conspires to give you what you want. So commit, get clear, have fun doing it. Who is your tribe? You know, I believe that the tribe for me, like I said, is the human race. But I love kids. I, I practice one day a week. I coach the rest of the time. But I work with lots of nurses, lots of doctors. And I've got to tell you, they don't, you would think they get it, right? But I still educate them. I still do reports. I help them understand because they don't connect the dots, right? They think we're a bunch of parts. And if this part's not working, let's work on that instead of connecting everything. There are people, like I said, who just love to treat symptoms, who love to treat things. I personally would hope that you would make a transition into starting to care for people. I regularly have people come in. My case history form does not even say 
if you have, it, what's your symptom? What's your chief complaint? It says, if you have a problem, what is it and how is it affecting your life? See, if your tribe, if you want a tribe of people getting care before they even conceive, what if parents decided we're going to get as healthy as we can be? Because a lot of parents do this, right? They're like, okay, before we get pregnant, we're going to do all this stuff. But they don't think about their nerve system. So if your tribe is to create people from having symptoms, conditions, disastrous consequences in their health, then you approach things differently. You have to make a clear decision and have clarity about what your purpose is in practice. And when you know what your purpose is in practice, you will develop your tribe. And so I'm gonna tell you that there's a wrong way to build your tribe. There's a wrong way to stimulate referrals. There are things that feel pushy, that don't feel authentic. I had the privilege yesterday of spending time with school advisors that have been invited to come here to hear about chiropractic, to encourage students to become chiropractors. And one of them shared with me that in her practice that she had been seeing somebody, that she just felt like a number. She didn't feel like they were connecting to her. That she didn't feel like they were listening to her. How you show up, whether you're really connected to people, whether they feel that what you do, you're doing because it's the right thing for them, will make every activity that you've learned, every promotional activity, everything you purchase, every handout, every Facebook post, every tweet, everything that you do will triple and quadruple and just be exponentially effective when it's coming from here and it's coming because you know that life goes better with chiropractic, that people need chiropractic. We don't need them. 75,000 chiropractors on the planet, there are seven billion people. There is not a shortage of new people. There are just a shortage of people who somebody has been able to eloquently articulate and explain the power of the nervous system, why you want to make sure it's as healthy as possible, and that the purpose of the adjustment is to help you, number one, adapt, to heal, to repair, and to regenerate. So that one day you, like me, will experience people coming in because they just want to express their innate potential. They want to experience the highest quality and quantity of life that is ever possible for them. I do not believe this is a pipe dream. I believe that right here within this room, what happens in this room can literally change the world because you're going to make a decision to educate, to communicate, to connect with people, to speak to them in a way that they say, oh my God, I had no idea. You hear the Chicago's coming out at me a little bit more. Oh my God, I had no idea. We tend to sound like we're whining in Chicago. I do have a little cold right now, I apologize, but we're very nasal. So I'm gonna tell you that, I wanna, I wanna give you a demonstration about often what happens in an office about the lack of ability to listen. So let's just listen to this right here. It's just, there's all this pressure, you know? And sometimes it feels like it's right up on me and I can just feel it, like literally feel it in my head and it's relentless and <coughs> I don't know if it's gonna stop. I mean, that's the thing that scares me the most is that I don't know if it's ever gonna stop. Yeah. Well, you do have a nail in your head. It is not about the nail. Are you sure? Because, I mean, I'll bet if we got that out of there. Stop the trying to fix it. No, I'm not trying to fix it. I'm just pointing out that maybe the nail is causing. You always do this. You always try to fix things when what I really need is for you to just listen. No, see, I don't think that is what you need. I think what you need is to get the nail See, out. you're not even listening now. Okay, fine, I will listen, fine. It's just, sometimes it's like, there's this achy, I don't know what it is and I'm not sleeping very well at all, and all my sweaters are snagged. I mean, all of them. Uh, that sounds really hard. It is. Thank you. Ow! Oh. 
come on. If you would just don't try to see. It's not about the nail. We want to be so subluxation centered. We want to be pain centered. We want to tell them what chiropractic is. Let me tell you what chiropractic is. We use words like us and chiropractic and we believe instead of saying, who are you? What do you need? What is going on with you? So when you find yourself, if you don't have an extraordinary retention level, you know, like think about my retention level. Think about each of your retention levels. You, most of you have been checked at least once a week, every week for this past year, right? So your retention is 52 just for this year. And the more people see chiropractors on a regular basis get adjusted when needed, the more their life will change. So if your retention isn't what it needs to be, you're probably talking about the nail and not connecting with them in their life. So I think that we have to improve our ability to have a conversation. Because after all, isn't that what it's really about? We're having a conversation when people walk, I like to call my office doors the sacred threshold of healing. And Jean said when they come across that, when they come into office, they want, if they're symptomatic, they want it gone right now, no more visits, no investment, et cetera. And so we have to shift their paradigm. We have to have a conversation where they can feel that this is about them, that we're listening, not that we're talking about us in chiropractic and what we can do for them. So listening skills and compassion are something that some of you have naturally. Some of you, when we get busy, anybody ever get busy and you're just like, uh-huh, 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 and you're like, I have no idea what they just said. Or is that just me? Right? We got to be present. James Parker taught us about present time consciousness. And that sometimes, you know, people can get a little chatty in our practices, right? Especially those first visits. Are you listening? Are you compassionate? I believe that in our practice, every conversation that we have is an opportunity to connect with somebody, to communicate, to educate, to inform, to lead, and empower them. See, I believe our job is to educate. It is to empower people. And it is to support them on their healthcare journey. They might not choose what we're choosing at this time, but if I don't support them in the decisions that they make, they won't come back when they're ready. So make a decision that you will prevent and you will handle objections. The number one objection usually is, I don't want to do this all the time. My insurance doesn't cover it. I don't have the money. Um, I don't have the time. How many people have been in practice more than a week in here? <laughs> have you heard any new ones? Right? They're repetitive. I just did a three-part series on handling objections, pre preventing them in the first place, dispelling myths and misconceptions that are out there, and the conversations that create high referrals and high retention. And so when I'm done here today, I'll have Katie or she's already out at the table. If you want to give me a card, I will send you those three classes because I think it's fundamental. The reason why I have been so successful, the reasons why one of my clients broke a, like a world record yesterday in, or last week in practice is because of the art of handling, preventing, um, objections, dispelling myths and misconceptions, and creating conversations that increase retention and referral. Each and every one of you need to develop that because then you will never be suffering for new people. You will never be ever, CAs, would you love it if you never had to make another missed appointment call? I mean, are there any CAs in the room? How many of you love making missed appointment calls? Doctors, look around. You can create strategies that prevent them from having to make missed appointment calls because people will call you when they understand the value. No, no chiropractor has to call me and say, Dr. Powers, come on in and get adjusted. Do you have to be called? Or do you go upon your own because you know the value? So I want you to learn how to dispel myths and misconceptions. They're everywhere, right? There's a myth and a misconception that chiropractic is for what? The back, right? 
And if I don't have back pain, I don't need care. Even if I teach a workshop and I'm talking about why it's a good idea to get checked before you even conceive a child or why you get adjusted through pregnancy, check to see if you're subluxated, adjusted if you need. And sometimes I'll be adjusting a newborn and somebody will go, I didn't know you adjusted newborns. And I'm like, where were you sitting? What was going through your brain when we were showing those pictures and talking about that? People turn off. That's why I think it was Jean who said you have to say the same things over and over again. People will hear things at different times. The number one, um, I believe, one of the myths and misconceptions that are out there that are hurting us is that it is about the back. If we stop to start to talk more about life and less about the back and the spine, we will just eradicate this whole idea that you only go to a chiropractor if it's about your back. We will be full, our offices will be like Disney World where people are lined up and there's traffic control police organizing people to get into our practices. Can I get an amen? amen. Now some of you go, oh no, 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 that would freak me out. But I want you to get a bigger vision. So what, there's things that are out there that it's addictive, right? Have you ever heard that? I don't want to get addicted to it. Somebody told me that the other day. I'm like, hmm, what's your physiology of addiction to having a healthy nerve spine, right? And so you just you have to have these conversations. When you have these conversations, when you're willing to bring things up before somebody brings them up, they're like, oh my God. I love that she knew what I was thinking or worrying about or concerned about. It increases your credibility. It increases your ability to influence and it increases your ability to persuade. Because you are in the business of saving lives and changing lives through the power of chiropractic. And if you don't master the art of conversations, you will forever struggle or you'll always be having to you know, fill up the bucket because it keeps leaking out. Or they come in the front door and they go out the back door. So how do we engage people? You know, there's different kinds of behavioral styles, right? There's drivers, there's analyticals, there's expressive. You know, we ha we, uh, the more we understand styles of people, behaviors, what moves them, what motivates them, what leads them, when we understand how people tick, besides chiropractic, what makes them tick, tick, tick. Then we can communicate with them in a way that is important to them. Analytical people love facts. Expressive people are like, don't bore me with those details. Just inspire me to want to continue to come. Sharing stories, anecdotes, parables, those are things that people can be engaged in that can make sense to them. When I first started in practice, this man came in and he had this crumpled old Valpac. Remember Valpacs? Anybody ever old enough in here to use them? They are like little um, coupons that you would put in direct mail. You would never do that anymore. But he came in, it was all crumpled up. And he said, can you help me? He has a strong accent. Turns out he'd been a prisoner of war. He'd been beat on the back of his head in Nazi Germany every day, beat on the back of his head for many years. He'd been in, out of prison, but he'd been in a prisoner of his own loss of health, headaches every day. You could just see there was no life in him. And as we started to adjust him, his body started to change. You could see his start to stand up straight. You could see the ease come into his body. One day he came into the office, he took my hand, and he said, thank you for giving me back my life. Thank you. Goodbye. And he left, and I never saw him again. And, and that day was an awakening for me. Number one, I needed a coach to help me to educate somebody to continue to come, but more importantly, that what I did was not about his headaches, it was about giving him back his life. So when you're in your practice, are you sharing stories about the kids that you're seeing and how their grades got better and what happened? Are you sharing your own personal story about why you do what you do, how you still get checked every week, how your team gets checked, why you see your children? 
Well, if we want to gauge people, we have to deliver messages with an edge or a hook sometimes. We have to stop people and just make them go, what? I had no idea because people are walking around in a trance. We have to demonstrate. We have to role play. I show people how to check, like they're babies, you know. If there's a deviation in the gluteal fold, or if they can't breastfeed easily, that's an indication that it's time to bring them in. I tell people about lack of posture deviations, worn out shoes, uneven pants. Like demonstrate and role play with your people so that they can educate and engage people. The one who asks questions will not lose their way. The one who asks questions will not lose their way. So not only asking yourself questions about am I engaging people, am I conversing, am I connecting with people, asking your practice members the right questions is huge. Like if you wake up in the middle of the night and your child has a fever, what are you going to do? That's how you know if they think, hmm, I have your cell number, I'm going to call you, I'm going to see if I can bring them in and get them checked, or I'm going to give them aspirin. Right? So, so asking the right questions will help you understand what a person understands, what their level of commitment, what their level of engagement is in what we do. If you model, you know, Gene said that, he's a perfect example, how he eats, how he works out, what he does, does he get adjusted? Are you a model of health and energy and vibrancy and excitement in your practice? Are kids saying to you, I want to go to school and do what you do because it looks like so much fun and it feels so important and it makes such a difference in our life? Are you a model for chiropractic? In our office, I think we always need to have advocates and we have to have ambassadors. I think that it's vital that you look at your practice members and you say, I know that you were really skeptical when you came in and you were worried about whether it'd be safe for me to check your child or adjust your child. There's oftentimes many other mothers who come in with that concern. Would you be willing to be one of my ambassadors or my advocate that I could extend your number to somebody and they could call you? See, if you're somebody who uh, takes care of lots of athletes, I, do, I take care of a lot of pro athletes, and they are afraid if somebody does something different, will it affect their performance, right? So let me have you talk to one of my other athletes. Engage your practice members to help other people. So let's go through a referral system. He went through day one through three, Gene did, or went through report of findings, et cetera. I'm going to just briefly gloss over some of that. Number one, the f outcome of day one, for me, my intention is that by the time they've, they're getting ready to exit from their first visit, they're already saying to me, my family needs to come in here and get checked, don't they? That they're saying, oh my gosh, I had no idea that the nerve system was so important and that all these things can cause interference in the nerve system. I personally don't have to ask for a referral. I don't have to do much. People just flow in because they're wanting to do the right thing because they have an understanding. So in your first three-day procedures, you're laying the foundation, as Jean had said. CAs over the counter, you have no idea how much you can connect to people, be an influence, be able to persuade them, to empower them. You don't talk, I personally don't, I, they don't need more friends. They have friends. They need somebody who can be a guiding and a light and a voice of reason in a crazy world. So what we say at the table, what we say over the counter is part of our referral system. There are golden opportunities. The other day, a lady came in. She's been maybe being cared for for about a month. She had open heart surgery, really poor health. And she said to me, you know what? When they did this open heart surgery, they promised me that I would feel 20 years younger. She said, nothing has made me feel younger until I came here. Over the last month, I feel 20 years younger. She goes, maybe even 25 years younger. I cannot believe my energy. That was a golden opportunity, wasn't it? To say thank you. Do you think that other people even know that? That they think that it, how it impacts their life? So be aware, take a moment when somebody is appreciating the changes that they're experiencing in their life. You know what happens? We're so used to that. We're like, mm -hmm, yeah, that's what I expected, of course.
stop, float in it a minute, celebrate it with the person, and make it a golden opportunity for them to share and tell other people. I think there's three elements of a successful referral. Number one, who's the name of the person that they're interested in telling about chiropractic or getting checked for subluxation? Number two, what's their name? And number three, what's our action step? All right, so I believe that in my practice, I like to use five different ways to introduce people to the power of a healthy nerve system, to having a higher quality and quantity of life. And that is either to have them come into one of our workshops, or a workshop series, have me call them after office hours or at a time that's convenient for them to answer any questions or concerns, bring them in with you to see what's going on here, observe what's happening with you. Number four would be to come to one of our special events. And the last one, which most chiropractors use more than anything, is to give out a piece of paper or a handout or a flyer or a link. Yes, a link, a lot of us do that now. But when they're in my sacred space of healing, I can connect with them and I can educate them and hear their story in a way that I can't do that through a brochure, a handout, or a link. Choices, you have to give them choices. Not everybody's gonna be moved by the same thing. You need to establish what are the choices you provide in your office to help people stimulate and activate and engage their friends, their family to come on into the office. As a team, we must be accountable. We must set deadlines and boundaries. If somebody says to me, I want you to call my friend, I do not go to bed that night until I've called their friend to talk to them. I have systems, like my um, master lead sheet is organic. Every week it's updated, it's changed. Some people aren't gonna fall through, some people will. You must have a sense of urgency. This is about their life, not about their back. And if you don't have a sense of urgency, they won't have a sense of urgency about coming in. When you go out and about and networking and alliances, do you have a referral system? Do you have the right questions that you need to utilize when you're networking? Do you have follow-up that you need to utilize when you're calling them after networking events? Um, I have a great class on networking and the proper qu uh, questions, and so if you want that, I'll give it to you because I want you to be effective when you're out there. So when we're looking at referrals, Gene had his top five stats, which I totally agree with. The other stat I think you need to look at is how, what percentage of my practice is referrals? I like to stay home. I go out and I do uh, things, but I'd rather them come to me than me go to them. I believe we have to be extraordinary at appreciating and recognizing our people because they are putting themselves at emotional risk when they say, go and do this, or I believe that. You know, I do a whole thing about how we have to defend, teach people how to defend the care that they need. You have to have tools and strategies. You've heard that all weekend long, right? Tools and strategies. It's systematized, it's functional, it's organized, and when it produces, then you know what's working and you keep on doing it. If it's not working, you change your systems, you change your tools. So I'm gonna leave you with this today. What do you need to do to better help others navigate their healthcare decisions? Do you even consider yourself as somebody who helps people navigate their healthcare decisions? How evident when people see you is your ability to deeply care for them, to connect with them, and to be compassionate about whatever's going on in their world. What can you do to improve your mastery of educating, of empowering, and being supportive of your people? Are you focused on telling the truth and the consequences as if they were a loved one? Remember Jimmy Parker always taught us, take care of everybody like they're your father, mother, brother, sister, uncle. You, those people you care for, they belong to somebody. And are you really being honest with them? Or are you afraid? Are you inhibited? And so if you know for a fact that chiropractic saves lives, it changes lives, that we're always better off with a healthy nerve supply than without, that our innate intelligence runs, controls, connects and coordinates everything in our body. If you feel this, if you know this, if you understand it, then it becomes easy to share your purpose to share your calling, to serve more people, and to save more lives.
When we use our heart, our hands, and our anchored mind, what we start to see is we no longer have children coming into our office like dear sweet Deb, who came into my office and the one line that says, if you have a problem, how is it affecting your life? And the mother says, I need more paper. He has 25 diagnoses, five years old, five years old. So I explained to his mother and I explained to him what I'm gonna do, why I'm gonna do it. I lie him down to give him his first adjustment and he looks up and he says, this is gonna help me, isn't it? He knows at five something's not right. I make his adjustment, I say the power is on he gave me one of the sweetest, biggest hugs ever. Because in that moment, he knew that his body, his mind, his heart, and his soul, his spirit, were just the way they were supposed to be. The future is in your hands. And the way to create the future is for you to be able to predict it by creating systems, policies, procedures, conversations coming from your sacred heart. We were given a sacred trust. It was not to protect back pain, or alleviate back pain. It was to help others work with that subtle substance of the soul that emanates the universe. And so I leave you today hoping that you will commit to being a better version of yourself. You will do everything in the moment knowing that that might be all that you have and that you will walk in peace and harmony and honoring all that is within each individual that you see, knowing that you have the power to change their life. I love you and I appreciate you because you love what chiropractic is. Serve. Thank you.